This segment brought to you by Kansas Grain Sorghum, growers working together. Find out more at kansasgrainsorghum.org. We're back. Let's join Kyle and Carolyn O'Neill as they discuss her perspective on the food industry. Hi, this is Kyle Bauer. I have Carolyn O'Neill with me. We are currently in New Orleans. She has an interesting perspective when it comes to the food industry in that she's worked with CNN, has been a reporter, is a reporter uh, for major news companies, has to report on food every day. Carolyn, how do you do that and remain credible and sort through mistruths? Well, you know, I do believe that I am credible. I uh, currently report for the Atlanta Journal and Constitution, which is a major news daily. I have a weekly column that I'm responsible for. And believe you me, if you have to write something every week, it comes up pretty fast. And you think, what am I going to write about this week? You asked about credibility. I don't... I am credible only in that I feel like I have the knowledge to, um, as a registered dietitian with a master's degree in nutrition and over 20 years of experience of witnessing the roller coaster, if you will, of research on food, nutrition, agriculture, and all the trends. I mean, I just think that's not even something I think about um, because I care about finding the best information and then finding the best ways to translate it. Okay, so if credibility comes from people trusting the way you translate the science because you understand it first and foremost so you can put it into a common language, I think that is the answer. But you know what? Beyond credibility, I think today as journalists, we worry about relatability. You know, are you really connecting with folks and what they're really concerned about, um, what they're afraid of, um, what they'd like to splurge on, what they're curious about? And of course, that's going to morph from if it's a mom with little kids to maybe a senior adult. You know, there are legitimate concerns on health issues, whether it be a gluten-free um, or uh, many other things, allergies, but it appears that a lot of people take advantage of that on marketing and even marketing of research um, to get playtime in the news. Well, you know, let's address the what's happening in the food marketplace, first of all. And, you know, when you go to the supermarket, you see so many things that are on a package, whether it says gluten-free and maybe it's a product that never contain gluten to begin with. I'll use a silly example, but it's a true one, water. I actually saw gluten-free water. Um, at recent, and I thought, well, that is ridiculous. But then I thought, well, okay, let's say if you're celiac and you really do have to avoid it, their tagline was, because you can never be too sure. Now, with allergies, um, I think it's also important, too. I mean, there may be, say, on a milk product, gluten-free. Well, there's no gluten in milk, but maybe it was from a facility that could potentially have also run some other products that happen to have gluten in there because of the weed or whatever was there. So some of it you're like, is this like a water is wet? Or is it just something to reassure consumers, hey, we've done the worrying for you? You know what I mean? Um, and I think there's value to that. But then some of the marketing claims, I think they're just trying to jump on a health halo. You know, now with Greek yogurt, and you know, and it's a snack cake, but they're trying to make the snack cake seem more healthy by saying, oh, we had a Greek yogurt in the recipe. We're visiting with Carolyn O'Neill. This is Kyle Bauer reporting from New Orleans. After these words from our sponsors, we'll be back with Kyle and Darren Wallace with Bear Crop Science. <laughs> 